Good morning, my friends. I don't know if it is morning where you are right now, but for me, it is Saturday morning and I'm about to start my weekend and I am about to film my very first YouTube vlog. I am very excited and I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing, but we will figure this out. So my plan for the, yeah, for this video really is, um, I guess to just take you with me through my weekend along with me. I have a couple of plans this weekend to go to at least two bookstores and yeah, just take you with me. I live in New York City, so you'll see a little bit of that too. And I hope you're gonna enjoy. I actually just finished recording my book unhaul video, which um, by the time I post this video, you will have probably already seen. And I basically went through my bookshelf, sorted out all the books that I want to give away. And I have now a book box of um, 14 books here that I want to bring to a bookstore that I know buys used books. And yeah, their hours are till two o'clock. So I'm going to have to be quick here um, and bring it away um, before they close. <laughs> But yeah, I'll take you with me and we'll see what the weekend brings. We'll see how this vlog is going to go. But yeah, for now, let's just start with this, these books and the first um, bookstore on our list. So um, I say, let's go. Alright, so we're at Strand Bookstore and I decided to do a voiceover here. I hope it doesn't turn out too weird, but let's see. So yeah, here I am. I'm about to get in line to sell my used books. Yes, there was a line and it was quite long. I got yelled at once for standing in front of a door entrance, but that's alright. It actually um, went by quickly. I, it was my turn quickly and then after selling the books, it was my turn to browse inside the bookshelves. And here you can see a bunch of the shelves. The Strand Bookstore really has anything you can imagine. I looked up on the website, um, the store or the Strand Bookstore carries a total of 2.5 million books. And these are new books, used books, rare books, anything you can imagine in all kinds of categories, in all kinds of genres. So you can spend literally hours here. And yeah, a lot of the books are used, as I said, so the prices are not too bad either. So if you ever find yourself in New York with time at hand and nothing to do, stop by the Strand Bookstore. You're not going to regret it. And yeah, of course, I had to stop in the fiction section um, in the H category because of Kristen Hanna. If that was my husband, please ignore. <laughs> so I read The Great Alone in January and I love the book so much that it's like my number one priority right now to read more Kristen Hanna books. So I went to see which ones they had and there were quite a few. All of these, by the way, were used. So the prices were really not bad. And yeah, there is The Great Alone. I cannot wait to read more of her books. 
But yeah, apart from the shelves, uh, the Strand store has also a bunch of tables. These are the tables where you will find the new books. So this one is, for example, the contemporary bestseller table. And yeah, I see the um, sanatorium, which is one of the books that I just sold. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. We have Earthlings here. So you see a few books that I'm sure um, you know, I've seen a bunch of these online in other people's videos. So yeah, this one is a table with all the book talk, uh, TikTok books. So of course, we've seen these a bunch of times. There's Heartstopper books, Colleen Hoover cannot miss from this table. We have Taylor Jenkins read. And yeah, all of these books you've seen online probably. I love Verity, it was one of my favorites. I can't wait for Colleen Hoover to write more thrillers. And then I stepped over here is the signed by the author table. I, um, I was looking if I recognized any names here. And then, yeah, this book just stood out to me. I don't know, I love the coloring, so I had to pick it up real quick. And then here it is, here is Colleen Hoover. So if you are looking for signed Colleen Hoover books, the Strand Bookstore has it. And last but not least, this is the blind date of a book table, the last one I wanted to show you. I just love the idea of buying a book um, with just a little bit of information and then having the surprise at home when you unwrap it and find out which one is hidden inside. And then here's the beautiful rainbow shelf at the checkout and then it was already time to go home. Hi guys, so I just got back home from my little trip outside and yeah, it's 4.30 already. I don't know where the time went, but I had a great time. As you've seen, I went to the bookstore and sold my 13, 14 books that I um, have videotaped in my book unhaul video. And yeah, the line was very long, but I must say I only waited for like 30, 40 minutes and then it was my turn. I had no idea what to expect, how much money or value I would get from all those books. And to be honest, I would have probably gotten more if I had sold them online, but it was all right because I just wanted to know they're in good hands that somebody else is gonna read them now. So it was okay for me. I got a store credit actually, and it was about $30. So I went around and I looked um, for a book to buy and I actually found this one. It is um, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabriel Zevin. Zevin. And yeah, I've seen this um, before. It has been on my wish list and I'm so excited I finally have it. I'm just gonna read the little summary day here. On a bitter cold day in the December of his junior year at Harvard, Sam Mazur exits a subway car and sees, amid the hordes of people waiting on the platform, Sadie Green. He calls her name. For a moment, she pretends she hasn't heard him, but then she turns and a game begins. A legendary collaboration that will launch them to stardom. These friends, intimate since childhood, borrow money, beg favors, and before even graduating college, they have created their first blockbuster, Ichigo. Overnight, the world is th theirs. Not even 25 years old, Sam and Sadie are brilliant, successful, and rich. But these qualities won't protect them from their own creative ambitions and the betrayals of their hearts. Spending 30 years from Cambridge, Massachusetts to Venice Beach, California, and lands in between and far beyond, Gabriel Zevin's, Zevin's uh, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow is a dazzling and intricately imagined novel that examines the multif multifarious nature of identity, disability, failure, the redemptive possibilities in play, and above all, our need to connect, to be loved and to love. Yes, it is a love story, but it is not one you have read before. So I am really excited for this book. I love the cover. And yes, this is exactly what I got for my 13, 14 books that I um, brought to the bookstore this morning. But I love the experience. I actually enjoyed waiting in line with all these um, book fans. Like there were people that had suitcases full of books. So it was an experience in and of itself. But yeah, fantastic. Um, I'm very happy about this. And then um, I have to say that I may or may not have bought some more books, <laughs> but
but I am not going to show them now. Um, I'm going to do that in another book haul. I'm going, going to save them, put them on the, to the side, and I'm not going to read them until I have shown them. Um, as you remember, I want to first read my TBR and like at least get it down to a little bit lower and then I'll introduce these new books to my collection. But yeah, so for now, I actually am just a little exhausted. I just want to lay back. So that's what I'm going to do. I do want to start um, a new novel, which is one of my um, challenge books for my February challenge. For those of you who don't know, every month I create a challenge, a reading challenge. And this month it has been a challenge that was uh, pick a book that is set somewhere else. Uh, that can be another place in your country, another country altogether, or another world. Or the other choice was to pick a place, uh, to pick a book in a genre that you don't really read as much, or a genre that you've never read. And I picked one of the picks that I had was Credence by Penelope Douglas. And yeah, I'm excited to start this book. I have no idea if I'm going to like it or not, because it's a genre that I'm not too fond of, but um, yeah, I'm excited and I really love the cover. So I'm going to start reading that now. I'm just going to relax a little and for the rest of the day, honestly, I'm probably just going to be on the couch and um, yeah, relax. So that's what I'm going to do now. Good morning again, um, this time on a Sunday. I just got up and yeah, I was thinking about yesterday and it's been a really long day. Like after I filmed my reading sequence, I just read a little bit more of the book I was reading, Credence. And afterwards, I honestly, I just went to bed really early. But today that means I have a lot of energy and yeah, I'm a little hungry. So I think I'm gonna start the day by getting some breakfast and what could be more New York than a bagel. There are bagel places all over the place. So I'm gonna go to this one store that's right around the corner from where I live. It's very popular. And that means that sometimes there are long lines outside. I hope not today, but honestly, with my luck, uh, it will be a long line. And that seems to be then the theme of the week weekend that I have to wait in line a lot, but that is okay. Um, the bagels are well worth it. And afterwards, I'm going to go uh, on a walk through Central Park because I want to go to this bookstore that is very special. It's um, a French bookstore and I'm not 100% sure, but I think it has something to do with the French Institute. Um, I think it's somehow related. But yeah, anyways, it's really pretty and all the books there are in French. So I'm gonna try to film it. I'm gonna give my best to record it for you, um, to do it uh, justice, but I don't know if I'll be able to. It is really pretty. And then I am going to buy some books, not for me this time, um, but for my sister, because um, I need a present for her. And she has mentioned before that she would like some more French books because I've um, gave her some before. And yeah, so I'll be on the lookout. I'll show you afterwards what I got. But as I said, it's this time not for me. At least that is my goal. I mean, I can never be sure with me because once I enter a bookstore, it's like everything changes and I go crazy. But my goal is to just get some for my sister. So I say um, there's a lot on the plate again for today. So let's get started. I'll take you with me again. I just got home from the bagel place. I want to show you real quick how it looks like. I'm not really a, a blogger, but we'll give it a try. So we got orange juice. I went with my partner. Some uh, egg salad on the side. This looks like my bagel. I'm going to try to do this professionally. My partner's bagel probably is going to look better. The 
that's what they look like. And this is gonna be mine. I just got whole wheat with avocado, so nothing special, but the simple things can sometimes be the best. So let me just take a bite. Mm. See you at the park. I just wanted to show real quick, but I'll see you guys at the park.
all right so i just got back home and i mean you've seen the video i think the bookstore is so pretty it's called albertine and um what's funny about it so as i said it's a french bookstore and every time i go to the checkout they speak to me only in french i think if they realize that you're english they might speak in english but i'm not sure because to me they've only ever spoken french and i understand it enough that i could articulate um but yeah i always think that's very neat i always feel very french when i go there but um i quickly wanted to show you the three books i bought and as i said these are for my sister so i don't think she's watching this video but if you are right now uh stop watching right here and for everybody else i'm just going to show you so one of the books i bought was middlesex by jeffrey eugenides so it's the french version and um, I have this book on my TBR. Jeffrey Eugenides is the author who wrote The Virgin Suicides, a book that I liked a lot. Um, and I'm so excited about Middlesex. I think it's about um, a Greek family that moves to Detroit and we basically follow them over multiple generations. And the main character, I think, is called Calliope and becomes Cal throughout the novel. And there's a lot about DNA, about genetics and yeah, just immigrants in America. And I'm really excited because I just loved the work uh, from this author that I read before. So very excited. And I hope my sister is gonna love it too. Then I have here, um, Selkie Brühl by Paula Hawkins. Um, Paula Hawkins is the author who wrote A Girl on the Train and I'm not sure what the title is in English. I think A Slow Fire Burning or something like that. I think that would be the English translation. It's basically another suspense thriller and it's about um, a guy that gets murdered on a houseboat in England and there are three women that um, I guess are under investigation because they were the three that have seen him last and the three women are a one night stand um, family member and the neighbor and I think one of them basically did it and th that's the basic storyline and so I'm hope sh hoping she's gonna like that too I read a girl on a train a long time ago but to be honest, I don't remember it that well. I don't remember being like flashed by it. I think I liked it a lot, but I think a lot of people like the book. I just don't remember. It's been too many years, um, but I hope she's gonna like it. And then, yeah, the last one is uh, L'Apiculteur d'Alep by Christy Leftery. And this is, um, the beekeeper from Aleppo. Yes, that's the English translation. So it's a book about, um, you know, the war in Syria and about the refugee crisis. And I've heard about this book too. I haven't read it yet. Um, to be honest, I want to read all of these books and would love to keep them, but they're not for me. They will go uh, back to Germany to my sisters and I hope she's gonna like it. So I hope you enjoyed watching this for me. Um, it's now in the afternoon. I'm probably gonna just cut a video for YouTube and then I'm gonna post it later. So that's the last thing that's on my to-do list for today. And after that, I am just going to, um, yeah, relax, prepare for work for Monday and um, cook dinner and all of that. So. I guess this is it from me now. This is this was my weekend. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I have no idea if this video was done well or not. Um, I'm not sure how I'm gonna cut it together yet, but we'll see. I'm sure I'm gonna come up with something nice. And as I said, I hope you enjoy and I wish you guys all the best. Thanks a lot for watching.